All righty, and we are back. And we're seeing some questions already pop in. So if you have any questions for any of the speakers, pop them into either Zoom or the Facebook group. We will be collecting those. And yeah, it was fantastic. Well, welcome back. So our next speaker, which is a soul sister of mine, a Leo sister of mine, Kate McKay. Hello, Kate. Oh, sorry, I had 20 layers on. I'm in Florida, so we got the warmer <laughs> weather here. Well, fantastic. So Kate McKay is the CEO of Sienna Strategy Group, is an international best-selling author, transformational speaker, athlete, podcaster, and multi-million dollar business owner whose passion is, a sp is to spread her message of living a life full of confidence, courage, and clarity of purpose. Kate has over 30 years of success in coaching, health, and wellness, business development, and performance-based training. She has been a columnist for 15 years, has written for Entrepreneur, appeared in numerous no national and local radio, podcasts, TV, including PBS, which we also do have that in common, along with so many other things that we have in common. And yes. today we'll be talking all about being productive AF. Get right on clear and get after it high performance coach kate mckay provides actionable tools in a fun and interactive format kate is committed to inspire you to get off your butt and pursue excellence because what else are you gonna have excellence what else is all we need right <laughs> no it's seriously and i often ask and, and thank you for that introduction but i often will ask people whether i'm coaching them or speaking or wherever i am i'll say out of the one to hundred percent of everything you've been given in this life, and anyone who's listening, just throw in a number. What percentage of your potential have you tapped into or lived into? One to hundred. I don't know, Anya. What about you? What number would you say you've tapped into of your potential? What would you say? So for me, well, right on, right? So I love that, but I'm, but most high performers are people who are, uh, you know, wanting more in life. They're usually averaging the 40 to 60%. Now, like that's legit, that's legit numbers. So when we think about that, when we think about, whoa, that percentage of 40 to 60%, the goodness of life is that we get to infill it. We get to take that 40% or that 60% for some people, some people is 80% and be able to do amazing things to tap into the brilliance of that small window. So I guess that would be my question for the viewers and listeners out there is what is your number and what are the ways that we can fill that, that window with a bunch of goodness? And so a lot of times people will hire me and they'll be like, oh, I'm just not feeling productive. And I'm like, mm, well, I know productivity and that's my thing. I love, I'm a doer. So I love to help people tap in. But really the, the, the deal is this, that we don't know oftentimes what it is that we want. Therefore, what we're doing on our to-do list isn't even tapped into what really truly is calling us. So we have to look back at the number one, the number one high performance habit. And as a high performance coach, I focus within a, a science-backed research-based system. My mentor coach is Brandon Bouchard and I love the system because listen, the bottom line is we don't have time to not function and achieve success and have influence in the lives that we're here to live. Time is, is moving forward and we have no time. There has to be a sense of urgency, even obsession in us living in to the greatness that's within us. Um, I'm okay being obsessed. I may work more than other people, but I have fun. I love what I do. So the six high performance habits, and this is important to go over before we dig into how to be productive AF, is I'm gonna read them out to you. So we have clarity. So do you live in a conscious directed mind, body, mind, and spirit? Are you consciously driven forward with a positively engaged mind? That's clarity. Ooh, I love that one. That one, we get some hits on that one. The second one is energy. Are you feeling a high sense of energy and enthusiasm in everything you're doing, physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually? How's your energy? How are you generating energy? 
are you resting a fair amount? And we look into that. There's a lot of energy sucks out there. We know it can be relationships. It can be our diet, health and wellness. That's usually what people want to know about me. Kate, how can you have so much energy? Well, it's because I know extreme self-care and I have ADHD. So I've had to master my energy. Um, I, I couldn't survive. I wouldn't be here talking to you if I wasn't able to do just that. The third one is necessity. Are you doing something that has a sense of meaning every single day? Necessity. The fourth one is productivity. Here we go. Are you effective and efficient in your day? Are you effective and efficient? The, the next one is influence. Are you treating other people in a way that resonates who you are and who you want to be? Do you have influence and impact around your family, friend, community, and work environment that feels good, that resonates with you? Oftentimes what happens is we could have way more influence than we do. Way more. We undersell ourselves. And I mean that in the best of ways. The last one is courage. And this one is juicy. Courage is, are you living authentically to who you are? Are you speaking your needs and getting your needs met? This requires a great level of transparency. And in this culture of, oh, I say everything as it is, and oh, no, I'm true to who I am, I call BS on a lot of that. Because a lot of times people use false authenticity to deflect true connection. And I see it all the time. So it doesn't matter if we're talking about CEOs, any age, any sex, any uh, uh, age, sex, religion, intimacy is tough for a lot of people. Our culture does not encourage it in this uh, culture of clicks and likes and no likes. So when we look at even just our cell phone use, you know, if you Googled this right now and pulled up, how many times do we touch a phone in one day? And we're talking like the average millennial, I think. This is average. And I know it's way higher. 2,653 times we tap that phone. 2,653 times. Like, don't like. Uh, we're, we're having to make that many judgments. It's judgments, you guys. When you decide whether you're going to like or not like something, your brain has to make a decision. Do I want it? Do they have too many likes? Not enough likes. Do they have more likes than me? It's like insane. And guess what? That's extraordinarily stressful. <laughs> so how do you think that affects our productivity? It sure does, right? So um, I just bring up that statistics because it's real, because I love the science behind, uh, behind personal growth, because personal, spiritual, mental, professional, it's all the same. We have to live in alignment with all of it. And high performance is really like, are you attaining a higher level of peace, fulfillment, joy, it's whatever you want to use, whatever word, but the key operative word is consistent, right? What is meaningful to you? It's not like rah, rah, I made a ton of money or I'm like dating all that, you know, it's, it's consistent. We're experiencing consistent feelings of joy or peace or whatever that word is for you, right? I think it's awesome. So we're going to talk a little bit, we're going to dig into productivity. Now, Productivity isn't just being effective and efficient to me. It's just not. It's about being able to put your head on the pillow at the end of the day and say, today I made a difference. That's how I measure my success, my productivity. I may have a list of things I need to do, but I will measure that subjectively and objectively, emotionally. Was I present? Did I make a difference with the people in my life? That's a productive day. So what would I, I would just ask you guys, what is your measure of success? How do you measure productivity? And, and in what ways give you the most satisfaction and fulfillment in what you do in any given day? So I'm going to give you a couple tools. The first one I want to talk about to get greater clarity, and you'll see how this relates when we talk about productivity, is the question is, if you had to choose three words to define the best of who you are, three words, picturing yourself up in the future, doing your most amazing self, feeling just the way you want to, doing what you want to do, being surrounded by the people you want to be surrounded with, impacting the people that you want. What are those three words that the highest and best of who you are? 
write those down. And once you have those three words, even just one word, what I would love you to do is write, why? Why is that word so important to you? Why? Because I have clients, and this is a really difficult exercise for them to do, because they've been so long defining who they are, but why other people thought of them or saw them from a very young age, oftentimes, maybe in a relationship, right? So what would be those three words for you as you describe your highest and best self? Really powerful. So important to write it down, you guys. Journaling is as effective as therapy studies show. So there's nothing more important than being able to write down and discovering who you are every day. It's key to productivity. The second question I'm going to ask you when you have those three success markers is that's who you are as yourself. The next one is how are you going to measure your interactions with other people? Really important. So when you walk away, you're going to feel, man, I was really present. I was really authentic or I was really loving. One of my clients says, I was direct. She's beautifully direct. It's a gorgeous word for her. I was like, wow, that is so you, right? So what are those three words that you would use to describe your interactions? And then again, that same question, why, why? Why did you choose those words? Now, that's important work right there. And what I usually have people do, and I would love you to do this right now, is to take out your phone and with the three self words that you chose, even if you've only come up with one now, I'd love it if you would open up your phone, open up your clock setting, then your alarm setting. And in that place on your phone where it says label, I would love it if you would put one to three of your words that you describe who you are, your highest and best self. Just put those right in there. And then you're gonna set your alarm for some time every single day, seven days a week. And what's gonna happen is your phone's gonna go ding, 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 ding. And you're going to look down at your phone and you're going to look at those words and you're going to say, mm, am I being loving? Am I being kind? Am I being tenacious? Right? Whatever that word is for you. And that's going to be your reminder. So if you can live in that level of success and clarity, it will shift the way you show up, not only for other people, but for yourself. That's a really important quality of getting more production and being more productive every single day. Because if you know who you are and if you know how you're going to be in your, in, in your relationships, you will be so surprised at how much space opens up to live in your brilliance. Really important exercise. The second th um, thing I would just like to ask you, because listen, as a speaker, I'm actually much more of a facilitator. I love to ask questions <laughs> because I want you to think about it. It's not enough for me to pour my knowledge into you. I need to pour some questions into you so you can facilitate the truth in your soul. Because as a coach, my work is just to mirror your brilliance. I'm just here being a powerful mirror. That's all, right? It's all I do. So this is the question I'd like you to ask. Two questions. The, this one is, when was a time in your life that you were the most productive? That's one. When is a time in your life was you were so productive? And how the heck did you get so much done? So that's just something to journal about. When's a time in your life that you were really super productive? And how the heck did you get so much done? Why do you think I asked you that? The reason why I ask that question is because if you can figure out, yeah, right on, focus, big time, love that. So you had focus. So what I determined on, um, what I determined for me is that I was really productive when I give myself like a, a, a deadline. Like I compete in, um, in bikini competitions and I know that when I set a date, everything is gonna be so streamlined. And just like that participant just said, focus, right? It's a super key operative word. So 
I would like love you to research and just write that down for yourself. Dream on it. What made you so productive? And what, how are you going to get, how did you get so much done? This is the last question. This is it, drum roll. And this is what distractions right now do you need to eliminate from your life? It could be a habit. It could be a thinking pattern. It could be a relationship. It could be a behavior that if you eliminated it right now, you would have, you would 3X your success. 3X it. What would that be? What thing, person, place, habit, or behavior do you need to eliminate in your life to be more successful? <laughs> Oof, I know mine. <laughs> it's super hard. Yes, yes, yes. But you guys know what it is. I don't need to tell you. You can tell you. You can be transparent with yourself. You can love you through your transparency. It's so important. And you got to find the humor in it because, man, we're messy humans and we've got to be able to laugh at ourselves. It's a very important component of this work. Uh, and then the last one is, what do you need to bring in? What, what my young lads and lasses needs to come into your life to be more productive? Those are it, right? And if you journal those things, you're giving yourself your own direction because no one has the magic more than you do. You have the ticket to your system of ways that you can be productive. I can say, you need to journal more. You need to, that's not going to help as much as you deciding for you. When's a life I've been more productive? What was I doing? Right? Ooh, some gold in that one. And then that second piece going, what needs to go? And then what do I need to bring in so that I can open more space to live in my brilliance as a productive AF human being? Because we need you. And that's my calling. That's my yearning. That's my plea to you is that we need the brilliance that you're here to bring to the world. We need it. I need it. Everyone in this call, everyone who's heard this message needs it. We need you to be in your brilliance. So I'm just going to open up. If anyone has any questions, I'll be happy to, to answer them. I'm, um, I'm really here as more of a facilitator in this world. And I would love to hear from anyone who has any questions. I'll be happy to answer. Anyone, anyone, anyone. So yes, yeah, so we will, yes, I guess we're going to do some Q and A's at the end. Um, but yeah, I see that Kaz, you said you need to eliminate the phone, but it's hard, right? It's super, super hard to do it. I appreciate you sharing, sharing that. Absolutely. Wow. Good. And thanks. You, thank you, Alejandro. You got some, um, some more clarity. That's freaking awesome. Isn't that such a great word? You know, and I want to bring up just a, a point uh, really, because sometimes what happens in life is we get disrupted by, um, by life, right? Life has disruptions in our life. And sometimes it's small disruptions, like, you know, like cosmic two by fours. And sometimes they're big ones. And what happened to me is that I had a pretty, uh, a very tragic uh, occurrence happen in my life. In 2017, I lost my son to suicide, my son, Will. And he was absolutely an amazing human being. He was my spiritual friggin' little guru. He was in a Buddhist monastery. He came in the world as light, 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 light. And I think the bottom line is, is that he brought a lot of joy and happiness. I think a lot of people were so messed up after he passed because they were like, if this kid is the happiest and most peaceful spiritual person I know, where the freak does that leave us? It blew up a lot of people's lives. And I think that in a way that was the plan. I think he knew it. And I think honestly, this may sound really weird, but I think I knew it too. That this was some, a person that was gonna come in the world to disrupt status quo, to wake people up, including his mama, to live a life of greater integrity, to be in service to other people who are suffering to love 
fully and be present in every freaking moment. And mostly to self-honor and self-care and respect myself in my relationship with God. It's divine. So basically, sometimes when life knocks you on your ass, as Les Brown said, just make sure you fall on your back. <laughs> because if you can look up, you can get up. And so that's what I'll say to all of you. Where in your life have you not, has life knocked you down that you have chosen to maybe still be on all fours and not ready to stand back up? And this is a call to you. Rise. Rise and live within your brilliance. Because I, I need other warriors and badasses on this journey to rise with me, to help people, to be servant leaders, to be the light that we came here to be. There's no more noble cause. Yeah? Does that make sense to you guys? There's no more noble cause. We don't have time not to be productive. And we have to look at productive as a sexy process because that all that means is everything becomes clear because we're living in alignment. We're living into the gifts that God gave us, the divine, the holy, whatever that is for you, you name it as you will. But if you're a part of Expansion Maximus, you know that the spirit is all things, right? It's the holy path. And I just think that, you know, again, we just don't have time. We don't have time to waste. And I'm here, you know, as your partner on the journey. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to me at kate-mckay.com. I will be teaching uh, a couple different components of this work, but it is a holy process. It's a holy process to become who you came here to be. And, um, and I'm just here, as I said, as a powerful mirror of your transformation. So again, just um, summarizing just the whole idea behind productivity. Productivity isn't just making lists and getting it done. Productivity is living authentically and who you are and who you came here to be, getting clear on who you are, and then going out and judging your interactions every single time you come into a room. Every time you meet someone new, every time you see your lover, every time you see your animal, I'm an enthusiastic human. That's who I am. I came out like that, even through everything that I've been hit by. I'm like, all right, where do we go? Here's the light, right? I don't even know. It was just, I can't humble myself or try to dim that energy to play in everyone else's field. And it took the death of my son, you guys. Grew up in a family of 11, total chaos, you know? Dim, Katie, dim, too bright, too loud, too dim. No more. So if I, if, if you don't, if I irritate you, I'm okay. If you love me, I'm okay with that too. But if I irritate you, I may be like that a little bit more. <laughs> Why? Because I want you to prove me wrong. I want you to be like, wait a minute. She thinks she knows what she's talking about. No, be righteous in your commitments. Be righteous, be irritated. Um, because oftentimes I remember reading this um, just as a final thought. When I read this in an article when I was like, had young kids, I had three babies. And the article said this, when you have your teenagers, just ask them this question. Yeah, what pisses you off? They will tell you. So I oftentimes like to get to that point, even with my adulting clients, what pisses you off? They're like, oh, nothing. You know, I'm, pretty, I'm like, oh, yeah, right. <laughs> we got to get to the emotion of life it's where good things happen so stay in your heart keep communicating who you are and uh i'm grateful for the time so thank you so much appreciate you all thank you so much kate i always love listening to kate chat um her and i we've exchanged podcasts she's been on mine i've been on hers and her story every single time touches my heart so much i did mm. want to point out because like i you and i we're leo sisters like we have a lot of freaking energy i talk way too fast i irritate a lot of people <laughs> as well and take like if myself or kate or anyone else irritates you 
that's part of you that's irritated. You are being irritated from yourself. That part of yourself needs to heal so that you can expand. It's not us that's irritated. It's you that is irritated. And it, we are just triggering that part of you. And that needs to be looked at. That needs mm -hmm. to be reevaluated. Why am I getting triggered by this person being too loud, too this, too this? We're not sh dimming our lights for anyone. No more playing small. No. But expansion no. alchemy, that's what expansion alchemy is all about. No more freaking playing small. It's time to go after what you want, fully expand in all aspects of yourself. Spirituality, personal development, health relationships, business, your relationships, your finances, everything. It is time for you to freaking arise and that you can start triggering people as well and be like, you know what? This <laughs> is my full essence. This is all that I am. Ooh, mm. thank you so much, Kate. I love your energy. I love all of you, all that you're about. Ooh, so good, so good. Um, if anyone has any questions for Kate, we will be doing a Q&A um, session at the end. Um, so type your questions into either the Zoom or on Facebook as well. We will be collecting those and Kate will be coming back for the Q&A session. So let's take a quick little two minute intermission and bring on our next speaker. Thank you, Kate. I appreciate you. I love you. Yeah. I love it. Thank you so much.